So this one says to us, which factorization can be used to reveal the zeros of the function f of n equals negative 12n squared minus 11n plus 5? Right? Well, no, you can't. There is no way on the planet Earth just to look at these and know the answer. Okay? So y'all don't need to look at this and think, okay, I think it's A. Right? You can't do that. Okay? Now here, when it says which factorization can be used to reveal the zeros, it's saying which factorization, if I took this f of n and changed it to an equal zero, in other words, if I had negative 12n squared minus 11n plus 15, and I set it equal to zero, how would I solve this by factoring? That's what it's asking. Right? Now this is a quadratic equation. Look over there on the board. We got four ways to solve a quadratic. Graphing, factoring, complete the square and quadratic formula, right? Mm -hmm. They're asking us to uh, solve this by what? Factoring. So we need to factor this. Okay, we need to factor this. Now I'm here to tell you A is wrong. That is not a correct factorization of this. This is a quadratic, isn't it? Yes. And when you factor a quadratic, it usually factors into two what? Binomials. And so this isn't two binomials. So we're going to go ahead and mark A out. Now, how do I factor this right here? Because negative 12 doesn't go into everything, does it? And so I need to factor this by what? I need to factor it by grouping. And some of you have forgot how to group, so let's get us a little review on factoring by grouping. Are you ready? Yes. Step one in factoring by grouping is to multiply A times C. So if I take A and I multiply it by C, that's negative 12 times 15, and that equals what? Negative 180. Now step two is to write all the factors of 180. Mm -hmm. But my factors of 180 have to add up to equal negative what? Okay, so we're factoring by grouping. So my factors of 180 are 1 times 180. Can I subtract those and get negative 11? No, so that won't be the ones I use. 2 times 90. Is 90 minus 2 equal to 11? So that's not right. 3 times 60. 60 minus 3 doesn't give me a negative 11. 4 times what? And that won't work to give me negative 11 if I subtracted them, would it? 5 times 36. That won't give me negative 11 either. 6 times 30. We're getting closer, right? 30 minus 6 is 24, isn't it? But I need it to be 11, don't I? So what about 7? Does it go in? No. What about 8? No. What about 9? Yes. There we go. 9 times 20 because now I can do 20 minus 9 and get... Well, I can't do 20 minus 9. I have to do negative 20 plus 9, don't I? Now, let me, let's review. What is negative 20 times 9? Negative 180, which is what we need, right? Yes. And what is negative 20 plus 9? which is what we need, right? Yes. Now, remember what we do is we take this negative 11 in and we take it out of here, don't we? Yes. And we replace it with 9x minus 27, I mean minus 20x, right? So I'm going to rewrite this problem as negative 12n squared, but instead of writing negative 11n, I'm going to write what? Plus 9n minus... 20n plus 15. plus 15 equals 0. Remember, this is factoring by what? Grouping. And so now we can group it, can't we? Yes. So I'm going to group this. I'm going to change this minus right here to a what? Plus, plus a what? Say plus a negative. Plus a negative. So I'm going to go plus a negative, right? Yes. Did I do it? Yes. And now I need to group that right side. So I'll group this, oops, I'll group this and this, right? Now what should I do? So now I need to look at what's the biggest number and letter that goes into both of these, and what's the biggest number and letter that goes into both of these, right? Well, in this first one, I think it's probably negative 3, is that right? 
Negative 3n. Negative 3n. So let's factor negative 3n. Well, let's do the negative 3n. Let's get the negative out of there. So when you factor negative 3n, that's telling me to divide by negative 3n here and divide by negative 3n here. And so what does it give me in the parentheses? 4n minus 3, good, plus, and then I need to factor this one. What goes into both of these? Just 5, so I'm going to write 5 times what? 4. Oh, I meant to factor out negative 5. Good call. Let's factor out negative 5. Do I want to do that? Yeah, I do. And so when I factor negative 5 out, I'm dividing this by negative 5, and I'm dividing this by negative 5. Oops. And so it gives me, right here I have negative 20n divided by negative 5, which is 4n. And here I have 15 divided by negative 5, which is negative. Now what you should notice is the, I have a 4n here, and I have a 4n here, so I can take them out, can I? So I'm going to write this 4n and this 4n right here, 4n minus 3. And then what's left is negative 3n minus 5, right? And so there's our answer. So now what we need to do is go to the, the answer choices and see which one matches that. Uh, D. No, D doesn't. And, well, I'll tell you, yeah, it's B, very good. Now let me tell you why the answer is B. What they did is they just multiplied everything by negative 1. So they made, look right here, and you're allowed to do that. They made this negative and this positive. And they made this positive and this positive. So they changed the sign of everything, didn't they? And so you can always change the sign of everything as long as you do it to everything. And so now does this right here match this? Huh? And so the answer is B. Okay, you factored it completely. Right? Look, if, you, if, if I have X minus 2 times 3X plus 1... That's the same as negative x plus 2 times negative 3x minus 1. Did you know that? If you change the sign of everything, it's the same. So right here, we just change the sign of everything, and it's the same as that, isn't it? 